So thanks everyone for joining uh, and attending today's session. Um, I am Ajay Karambur. I work as a principal engineer in the Cisco NFVI project. Along with me, I have Yi Chen, who is a technical leader in the same Cisco NFVI project. Um, our product is basically a on-prem private NFVI cloud that supports both container Kubernetes workloads and virtual machine workloads. So today we're gonna to share our experiences on deploying container network functions on Kubernetes. So the high level agenda of this is going to be, we're gonna start off with an introduction to NFV. Then we'll talk a little bit about the requirements for deploying container network functions on Kubernetes. We'll talk about various features like CPU manager, huge pages, topology manager, and multis and SRIOV. And then we'll finally talk about the steps for how to all bring all of these features together and do a sample Kubernetes deployment. And then we'll conclude with a demo of how you have a sample CNF that leverages each of these features um, to do a realistic demo. The application that we're, we're going to be doing and testing today is called VPP. It's a fast virtual switch um, that we are using here. Then we'll conclude with a summary. So uh, moving on, uh, what, is, what is a network function virtualization? So network function virtualization is basically the virtualization of the functions of networking nodes into software. So especially in the mobility space, you're seeing an increasing move of a lot of 4G and 5G applications which are already being converted into virtual functions. That move has been done for the last few years and it's kind of, there are a lot of private clouds that are running 5G and 4G stacks where there are lots of virtual network functions that are running on top of it. V routers, V firewalls, V load balancers, and a lot of the mobility stack are standard examples of network functions. The benefits there is reduced cost, accelerated service deployment, and easier lifecycle management. All of these are basically benefits of virtualization that have been brought in, in terms of network function virtualization. Moving on, um, what are the general NFE requirements? The applications that are network functions typically will need higher throughput, lower latency and jitter. For people who have worked in OpenStack, a lot of these features should be familiar. Things like CPU isolation, huge page flavors, SRIOV acceleration, FPG acceleration, are stuff that have been already implemented in Nova as an example in OpenStack. So today we'll talk about how some of these features can be integrated in Kubernetes and how we can deploy a real container network function. So moving on, what is the difference between a virtual network function and a container network functions? Virtual network functions, the delivery is in the form of virtual machines, more resource overhead, slower provisioning time, lower scalability and resiliency. Typically virtual network functions are accompanied with a VNF manager, which does the orchestration and the lifecycle management of these virtual network functions. With container network functions, they deliver in the form of containers, Obviously the benefits of containers are lesser resource overhead, faster provisioning time, higher scalability and resiliency. And one other thing is container network functions can leverage the lifecycle management of Kubernetes for their functionality. So moving on, this is our NFVI cluster. These clusters are typically small edge clusters that are deployed with some of our mobility stack running on top of it. So if you see they are basically a UCS or a Quanta server, we just pointed out UCS or Quanta in general, it can be any specific server. There are two Intel two port cards that are basically used for the SRIOV and DPDK functionality. On top of that, we run Ubuntu or REL real-time kernel. We run Docker 1.19 or Kubernetes 1.18.6. Then we have the standard Intel drivers for I40E virtual function and physical function and the VFI or PCI drivers for DPDK. Then we have huge pages pre-allocated in the grub, and we have two physical cores reserved for the host with hyper-threading that's four logical cores. So on top of that, you have a standard kubedm based deployment with kubelet and kube proxy. The alterations to that deployment are the kubelet is configured with CPU manager policy static and topology manager also is configured. The, from a networking standpoint, there are three, um, three two CNIs, Multis and SRIOV that are deployed on top of it. Um, and SRIOV device plugin to manage the SRIOV virtual functions. A typical application pod or pods on top of these are stuff with multiple network interfaces and using features like CPU pinning and huge pages, etc. So that's the NFVI cluster. Let's now dig into different NFVI features and let's then finally talk about how to bring them together in a real application on top of Kubernetes. Going on, 
what is the CPU manager? CPU manager is, is basically for compute intensive workloads. So basically it's a mechanism by which you dedicate cores to your specific container network application. With this, they can run with high performance and they, can, they have dedicated cores to run, uh, to meet high throughput and low latency expectations. It's natively supported in KAS as of 1.18. It's brought in through a simple Kubernetes kubelet config, which says CPU manager policy static. But assuming that you've already done the work at the host level to do isolated cores and basically carved out specific cores for Kubernetes and the host processes versus the application workloads. In 1.18, a new flag was introduced called reserved CPUs, which is basically the CPUs. When we say host CPUs, these are CPUs not only reserved for the host processes, but also the Kubernetes control plane itself. Uh, we are disabling CFS quota so that sometimes we've seen spikes with CFS quota enabled. So this is being disabled for that. This CPU manager static policy, the pods that are basically uh, deployed with the CPU manager running are running with guaranteed QoS. This is kind of leveraging the QoS feature in Kubernetes, which is more broad than this particular use case. But in this particular case, we are focusing on the guaranteed QoS. There are other uh, best effort and best effort QoS and burst QoS, which we won't be talking about in this particular presentation. Huge pages is the second aspect. Uh, basically, it requires huge page configuration on host, natively supports both two megs and one gig, one, one gig huge pages. The nodes automatically discovered, so this is nothing needs to be done. It's natively available in Kubernetes as long as you have two meg and one gig huge pages configured on the host, they will automatically be discovered. Moving on. Topology manager, prior to topology manager being existent, this is a relatively new component. The CPU manager and the device manager made independent resource allocation decisions, right? But as you know, when you run um, VNF applications with high performance or CNF applications with high performance, you need NUMA aware scheduling to optimize performance. So the CPU manager, so the NUMA aware scheduling is supported in both the CPU manager and the device manager but today it's not supported with huge pages. So you cannot do new malware scheduling with huge pages. That's work in progress. So you bring in this feature by using a topology manager policy called single new node. There are other policies um, which are, but this is the more restri most restrictive policy. And in this particular case, this is done in our use case to be, to get the maximize the performance um, in this topology. So moving on, uh, there's more documentation on topology manager at the link we just provided. So we talked about CPU manager, we talked about topology manager, we talked about huge pages. Now on the networking side, when you have these applications that need PCI pass through or DPDK, you need SRIOV. But that means that you need a pod with more than one network interface and Multus, that is where Multus comes in. It is used in the SRIOV DPDK context to help facilitate multiple network interfaces for a pod. So the way the pod will look is you'll have a default interface, which is Calico, and you'll have additional interfaces, which are basically used for SRIOV and DPDK. Multus basically is responsible for calling the SRIOV CNI and getting the plumbing done. And it also is useful in exposing a custom CRD and network attachment definitions. We'll see a sample of this in the later slides. So the next aspect of this is going to be the SRIOV CNI. The SRIOV CNI is the one that plumps the SRIOV VFs to a pod's network namespace, and it basically clears them on a pod deletion. It works with the SRIOV device plugin for VF allocation, and is used to set various VF parameters of interest like VLAN, trusted mode, etc. So Multus is the component that invokes the SRIOV CNI with the right device ID. So the flow is basically that once the SRIOV device plugin allocates a specific virtual function, the Multus is going to send the PCI address information to the SRIOV CNI plugin to basically, um, SRIOV CNI to basically do the plumbing. So the right side is a sample attachment, uh, network attachment definition. As you can see, there's information like VLAN, what is the IP address range? And it's the type field is actually telling Multus which is the CNI to call, which is in this case, SRIOV CNI. Moving on, the next aspect is the SRIOV network device plugin. Its responsibility is simply to discover and advertise SRIOV virtual functions available on the K8 host. You can do resource grouping based on the various parameters and fields. On the right side, you see a sample config map where you advertise two set of resources, one which says SRIOV net device and one which says SRIOV DPDK and we are advertising them based on the driver being either I40 VF or VF IO PCI. 
And in this specific case, we are interested in only the um, Intel XXV710 cards as an example, right? With the vendor and device ID being those parameters. These are user configurable resource names, like the name, like uh, going back to the previous slide, these are user configurable resource names and they can be configured uh, based on the resource map. It detects Kubelex restarts and auto re-registers as well. And user creates a config map like the one shown in the right to get it done. Moving forward, so we talked about multis, we talked about SRIOV CNI, we talked about SRIOV device plugin. Now, how do you bring all of these aspects together to create a real deployment? So you basically start with an Ubuntu real-time operating system. Then you make host level changes to basically do the Tune D profile. Then you pre-allocate the huge pages via graph. Then you do the installations of the I-40 and I-40 VF driver bundled into the image. And then you have something that needs to create the SRIOV virtual functions and bind them to DPDK. In the earlier versions of the driver, this was dynamically done as part of the SRIOV pod creation, but right now you're, you're expected to pre-bind these to, to VFIO PCI ahead of time. The continuation of the steps in the next slide is going to basically show you that once you bind these SRIOV VFs, um, we are going to deploy the KHS with standard tools, the kubelet changes for uh, CPU manager and topology manager, you need to make those changes. Then you deploy Multis, SRIOV, CNN, and SRIOV network device plugin. And then you create the config maps. We went over those in the last slides. You create the network attachment definition. We went over those as well. And you declare, deploy the application pod with the needed resources on guaranteed QoS. So this basically uh, helps you bring up a real application with all of these parameters. Moving on to the next slide, you finally see an example of a kubectl described node with all the features enabled. You see huge pages, you see SRIOV devices, DPDK, and uh, normal devices. And also you see, in this particular case, you see that uh, four CPUs, that is four logical CPUs or two physical cores are reserved for the host and Kubernetes. The rest are what is allocatable. So with this, I'll hand off to Yichen who's going to do a demo and walk you through the demo scenario. Okay. Thank you, Ajay. So basically, uh, uh, before showing the demo, I'm gonna do a review the our host environment. We're gonna show you what is operating system and kernel version. We're gonna show the mechanism and the stuff we do for the CPU isolation optimization, and along with the huge page allocation as our VVF creation. And then we go to a sample CNF application. So in this case, we have a special image built which basically can utilizing the features of the CPU pinning, huge pages and SRV, all the stuff we talked about before. And uh, for the SRV portion, we do demo both type of uh, S, uh, SRV VFs. One type is for the Linux kernel and the basic binding to I-40 VF driver. And the other is binding to the DBDK. So in the case of a Linux kernel version, and uh, we can consume it while directly in a tap interface in the container. So that's easy to consume, easy to see. And in the case of a DBDK, and now we're using an application called VPP to consume the interface. So for people who don't really familiar with VPP, so VPP is an open source FIDO project under Linux Foundation, and its full name is a Vector Packet Processing, and it provides the out-of-box production quality switch and router functionality. So it delivers very, very fast performance, especially when we have a lot of flows, like 1 million to 1 million flows, when compiled with the open vSwitch DBDK. And at the last, we're gonna say, we're gonna confirm and verify the allocated CPU and SRV VFs, they are aligned to the same NUMA because we've configured a single NUMA node policy and a topology manager. Okay, now let's go to the demo and uh, let's see, uh, open share my terminal. Okay, so this is my uh, setup. So uh, the all-in-one node, I can starting with showing you with the operating system information. So. You can see that this is the Ubuntu 18.04 uh, of 0.5 LTS, and it's running on real time and basically low latency kernel. That's the real time version in the Ubuntu world. And then next, I'm gonna show you first is the uh, CPU pinning and the CPU isolation stuff. We go from the pro common line. So the all the interesting stuff coming from here. You can see we have a SKU tick, we have a ISO CPUs, we have a no soft lockup, no, no HUS, no HTTP, and RCU, no callbacks. All these things help to dedicate reserving a CPU for the CNF workload. So in this case, all help to make sure that there's nobody else, no other process can interrupt the CPUs that are reserved for the CNF workload to have a full CPU isolation. Uh, and then along the same place on the command line, we have a huge page 
which is highlighted here. So you can see that we have one gig huge page allocated and they're actually allocating 248 huge pages in total. And that these pages are just equally equivalently divided into two new models in, the, in this particular setup, which we can show from here. That's for the NUMA zero. We can see there's 124 huge pages and also go, we can go to NUMA one, 124. So there are huge pages allocated. So next, basically I'll show you the SROV stuff. In this particular setup, we have a four PFs and we are naming it as SRV zero, one, two, and three. So all of them, each of the PF functions, we have a 16 VF allocated. That's why I have a 16 VF all of them. That's the, uh, our setup. Okay, and then on the host level and uh, from the Kubernetes side, we can see CTL get node. You can see there's only one node. As I just mentioned, it's all in one node. So let's describe it. I, grew, I can go through a couple of things with you guys. And first is this section here. I highlighted over here. So this section is as I just highlighted in the, in the before slides. So you can say that uh, we have 80 vCPU threads in total. And in this case, hyper threading enabled. So we're reserving four of them for the host. So that's why you can see 76 is remaining for the CNF workload. And also we have a huge pages over here. And then we have a 16 VF interfaces for running DPDK workload. We have a 48 uh, VF uh, interfaces to run the net device basis for the Linux kernel workload. And uh, scroll down below, you can see that uh, we have a uh, Malta stuff deployed and uh, SRV stuff deployed. They're all running in the in a setup here. That's from Kubernetes side. Okay, now let's move to the real CNF. And uh, so before that, I want to show you how our networking uh, networking is defined. So there are two files here for the CRD, and uh, let's go look at them. Okay, so this one, uh, that's the our network uh, for the net device basically for the Linux kernel. So the key takeaway from here is we have a network called SRV net one, and that this guy's on VLAN 1590, and that the IP address is managing by IPAM. So that's the IP address range over here. That's the key takeaway here. And similarly, we have another set uh, file for the DPDK, and we name it the SRV net two, and also we give it a VLAN 1589. And the one thing we keep in mind is even in here, we define IPAM section here, but uh, because this is binding to the DPDK driver, so nobody else is gonna to consume the IP address being allocated by IPAM. So this section will simply just be ignored because we need the application, a real application to consume them. And IPAM has no control over there. And we're gonna show, we're gonna see that in the demo. Now last, uh, last file I'm gonna show you is our the pod definition file, that's this one. Okay, so we have a pod and uh, that's the name and the annotation we are saying, okay, we want two networks here, net one and then net two. And we have an image and the image has everything we need. We're gonna show you later. And we are saying, we are asking for eight gig of uh, huge pages in the size of one gig. And then we're asking for four CPU threads which is being pinged. And also we're asking for one net device for the SRVVF and one for DPDK. That's the resources we're asking for. And one thing you can uh, notice that there's a limit section and the request section. The value over there, you can see the CPU over here is four and the CPU here is four and the net devices, they're all one here, they're all the same. So this is how we do the guarantee the QoS. So if we do this and we can make sure that CPU is getting pinged and resources all being allocated, dedicated, this is how we do the guarantee QoS uh, class, how to define the YAML file here. And one final note here on a security context, we are adding the compatibility of IPC log. So this is just to run VPP and the VPP need this particular compatibility to run and that's it. Okay, now let's bring that up. Okay, so it runs fine. Let's go into the container. Okay, so in here, we're gonna verify all the stuff we mentioned before. Let's starting with the CPU pinning. You can see that uh, for this particular container, we are being allocated 21, 22, 61, 62 for the CPUs. And because we're asking for four and this exactly four and it's being pinned over here, that's for the CPU. And also we can verify the huge page. We have another uh, script basically to allocating huge pages. Let's do it. We can allocating one, one gig pages. 
successful, and then we can go up to eight. Take a while. Yes, now I can see that huge piece is also being allocated and being consumed correctly. Now the last piece is SRLV. So SRLV, as I mentioned, there are two type of them. So one thing, one type is basically for the net device is binding to Linux kernel directly. So let's look at it. So this device name type interface called net one. And you can see the IP address over here is being managed by IPAM and we know the IP address over here uh, because IPAM assigned us. So let's pin its gateway. Yep, it pins fine. Now the second type is VPP. And uh, in that case, we need to configure some. Let's first get off the information first. Okay, and so you can see here, there are two uh, PCI addresses over here being injected by the SRV network device plugin. So this guy is basically this guy we talked about before. And that this DPDK one is the one we're gonna use for the VPP. So let's copy the PCI address over here. And I have a VPP config file. I just do it to take a look and allow let's spawn the VPP process. Take a while. Okay, come up. So let's create an interface. By the way, so AVF is the native uh, uh, VPP driver supported uh, for the VF devices. So basically have uh, two variations. We can use the DPDK version or we can use the native VPP version. They all consume the same uh, VF DPDK interface. Let's create an interface. Okay, the interface is there being created fine. So let's bring this guy up. Set interface state up. Let's give it the IP. Okay, now let's pin the gateway. Okay, perfect. Now you can see that by doing this, we can verify that both the type of SRV interface, they are properly connected and they can ping outside. Okay, so last piece is the SRV, uh, sorry, the NUMA awareness. So for NUMA awareness, and the basically let's go back to the beginning. Oh, my terminal. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. So we have a task set dash CPA one, you can see this is the CPU we are being allocated, 21, 22, 61, 62. And when looking from the LSCPU, they are all falling into the NUMA node one. You can see that. So we know that our CPU is being allocated from NUMA one. How about our SRV? It's over here. And these two guys, let's check over there. Cat, sys, bus, PCI devices, AF, VO2.1. Numa node. Okay, so one, how about the other? Okay, they're both from one. So this basically confirmed that our CPU and the PCI devices, they all coming from Numa one and our policy does enforce it. Okay, now let's quickly go back to our slides to finish the final section over there. Do a quick summary. Okay, so in today, so we talk about a lot of features like uh, you know, both on host level and a Kubernetes level, like CPU isolation, huge pages in the host and also real-time kernel. And a Kubernetes, we talk about CPU manager, we talk about the topology manager, and then we'll talk about SRV, all these CNI plugins. So with all these features together, we're gonna show you a demo. Basically, we verified with running VPP there. We can prove that you can do a high throughput and low latency applications with all these features enabled, that's today. And in the future, we believe there's still some works like uh, topology manager, it doesn't support huge pages. So we need to make topology manager to support huge page have a better performance. And also in the future, we believe that FPGA support is gonna be very useful, especially in the teleco 4G and 5G, they're gonna be very helpful in the future. Okay, and these are the reference we are using and uh, thanks for listening and uh, welcome to ask questions.